Should have been safe, right? Nope. Gold took a hit too. Gold miners took a big hit. Now why was this? Well, as always the case, people need to liquidate their positions. And unfortunately, people are levered up on gold too. Why? Because of the paper market. And as long as that paper market is there to give us an extra option, and for people who normally would not be able to get exposure to gold to get exposure to gold, you know, those are all good things, but it also allows people through the futures market to short it when the time comes and to liquidate long positions without even thinking about it. Now, people say, well, gold is usually a great protection against a falling stock market. It is. You're right. But this last drop back in March 2020 was very unique to anything else to where it rebounded so quickly. Most people, and when I say people, I really mean like the large funds that have grandma's pension, like the gigantic funds out there, didn't even have time to move their money into gold. Gold will go down with the market, but then eventually it will rise well before the market does, assuming we have a sustained recession, which we did not. It rebounded so quickly that gold did not even have time to do what gold does. <laughs> Think about that. Uh, but when the everything bubble bursts and everything starts going down for real and no amount of money can save it this time, you're going to be glad you had your money in things like gold. Now, turning to oil, oh boy, <laughs> we saw what it did, right? Uh, futures price went negative. Uh, now, unless you held futures contracts, uh, all of your oil-related stocks did not go negative, uh, but certainly fell quite a bit because Saudi Arabia and Russia got together during this time of panic to pull some shenanigans, and people panicked even further. Now, is this in danger of happening again? I would say almost certainly not. You have to remember the sentiment back then. You know, people were really flipping out, and not just people in the financial world. Everybody was flipping out because we didn't know anything about what was going on or how deadly this thing was or how contagious this thing was, and the markets were reacting accordingly. So understand just what an anomaly it was, but we can still take away some real lessons from it. And we don't know what the rebound is going to be like or how long it's going to take to rebound once the really big crash happens, but we do know what happened on the way down. And we know that our contrarian investments are not safe. Far from it. But now in terms of how we do things on this podcast, the big question we need to answer here is, should the possibility of this happening deter us from taking action now? My answer is a defiant no. And I'm very certain in this answer. As a contrarian investor, as somebody who holds cryptocurrencies, and mining stocks, and other commodities poised to do well in a down market. I'm not scared one bit. I'm ready for it. I wouldn't have gotten in this if I didn't have the stomach for it. I invest money I can afford to lose, and I look at things like market crashes as an opportunity to buy more, knowing that the first investments to come out of the darkness and back into the sunshine are going to be your contrarian investments, just like they are every time. Now, I will say on this podcast, down the road, we will be talking about base metals, battery metals, things like that. And the reason I have not talked about that, we are very hesitant to build. And if the market crashes, the last thing any company is going to have on their mind is we need to start investing a bunch of money into building things. Now, I could be totally wrong about that, but that's my perspective. And that is the route I've chosen to take on this podcast. But as far as all the investments we have talked about so far... I really like their chances in a sustained crash, and I like their chances to do very, very well. If a recession goes long enough, i.e. more than a month, to where you give those big institutions enough time to pivot in the gold because they're freaking out and they're losing clients and all of their money, that is going to be amazing for gold and especially for gold miners. And silver should follow suit like it always does. Now, we just got done speaking about oil on last week's episode, and I think oil is just going to do what it's going to do regardless of what the stock market does. It's not even really dependent on that long term or even midterm. You know, short term, it might go down. Great. Uh, but we've done so much damage to that sector already, it's bound to go up no matter what. And then I think the cryptocurrency market's just going to keep doing what it does too. I think a big crash in the United States stock market is going to be a really great endorsement for sound money. And if cryptocurrencies can show strength through this, that's going to be a really great advertisement for them through the next decade. Now, apart from being right and sitting tight, which is really the only way to approach contrarian investing if you want to be successful, 
Uh, because waiting and suffering is just part of the game. I will repeat what Rick Rule said before. He has never had a 10-bagger that did not lose 50% first, at least 50%. So if you want the upside, you got to tolerate the downside. It's just it. But what you can also do is something we've talked about on the show many times, the two-tranche system. Put some money down now on whatever it is you're looking at, and then have another tranche ready to go if the market crashes and you can get in at a very deep discount. And then you just simply average down. What I would not recommend you do is sit around and wait for a big crash to happen and then try to buy everything at or near the bottom. First of all, the next crash might not go down anywhere near the way I described. <laughs> you know, this is just our best guess, really. You know, it's just like trading. You know, we look at history to try to determine the future. And at the end of the day, that's all we can do. Um, but we're going to be wrong sometimes. And then what if the crash doesn't come for another five, six, seven years, but all of these investments still go crazy? What if the market does have a sustained crash, but sentiment is so shitty that nobody wants to buy anything and they're all afraid to buy anything, including you. And then when the rebound does come, you still end up missing out on that opportunity you were waiting so long for. Contrarians, listen. The scariest part about a legitimate market crash is not having to absorb the downside. It's you being timid and foolish and a cheap ass and missing out on this generational upside. This is the real fear everybody should have. The fear of not taking action when things were calm and you had the chance to. Trust me, I know a lot of you are asking me this question because deep down you want to play super ninja stealth sniper and get these things at super deep discounts and you won't spend a penny on them until you can because you're afraid of drawdown. And why are you afraid of drawdown? Because at the end of the day you are lying to yourself and everybody else and you are not actually risking money you can truly afford to lose. If you were, none of this would matter. You would have your positions down and you would be excited for the recession. Give me your worst. Open up the gates of financial. I am ready for this. I am built for this. I have been waiting for this. This is the mentality you must adopt going forward. Now, if I sound crazy because I'm saying this, well, that's fine. I'm used to it. You actually do get crazier as you get older. That's the truth. Going to suck? Yes, absolutely. But when the dust settles... And we're the ones left standing. Not just left standing, but standing taller than everybody else. You should resist the urge to gloat. But what you absolutely can say is that we were not crazy. We were just early. <laughs>